We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. Today I'm with the West Midlands Ambulance Service and I'm in this special fast response vehicle to get you to the scene of an emergency first. <coughs> Chris, wrong vehicle. Yes, this, this vehicle. This is the one we're using, this one, like I said. Jan alone can do 10 to 15 emergency call-outs in a day and a new case is just in for a 76-year-old lady with a dislocated hip. We're almost there. It's amazing how quick Jan and the fast response vehicle are. Jan and I are quickly on the scene. Hello. Just went to move, move the cushion, and it went. So poor old Geraldine had a hip replacement, so a new hip put in just a couple of months ago. But it's already been dislocated once, and it looks like it may have gone again. Pain? Want to touch? A little bit. A little bit. So when it dislocates, that means that the top of the thigh bone comes out of the socket on the pelvis. The muscles are so strong in the leg that it's impossible to put it back in place without putting her under anaesthetic. So she is going to have to go back in and have a very small operation. And in the meantime, Jan can assess her and make sure there's no damage to any of the nerves or blood vessels and totally reassure her, make sure she's safe before she goes into hospital. Hello there, come on in. In no time at all, the ambulance has arrived to take Geraldine to hospital. We've got to do it all without causing her too much pain. So that's why we've got this chair. It's been phenomenally tough, but this is not going to be comfortable. And after some careful manoeuvring... I've got you, I've got you. Geraldine is on her way. So a hip dislocation is just a phenomenally painful thing, but the amazing skill of Jan and the other paramedics is to get her onto that chair and into the ambulance without really increasing the pain. And then she can get to hospital and have the problem fixed. In Liverpool accident and emergency, 13-year-old Alice has done something to her leg. I have a dislocated knee. Well, how do you know? So you can feel my whole knee, like, shift in the wrong direction. Weird. Well, how did that happen? It was break time at school, and Alice was chilling with her mates. Oi, son, leave the snow controls alone. Sorry, we did say she was chilling. Righto. So, did she dislocate her knee, running as fast as you can see? No. Did she jump in the air like she really didn't care? No. Was she swinging in the gym, balanced on one limb? No. Nope. And the right answer doesn't rhyme either. What was it then? She just turned and her kneecap popped out. Oh. Ouch! I've dislocated my knee eight or nine times before. Eight or nine times? That's no <laughs> laughing matter. <laughs> On the case is Dr Anne Kerr. What we need to do today, I need to have a little look at it. It's going to hurt, obviously, so what we'll do is get the gas and air, then I'll try and have a look at your knee and see if we need to straighten it up ourselves. Gas and air is a mixture of nitrous oxide and oxygen. As you breathe it in, the gas numbs the pain receptors in your brain and it can also make you feel a bit funny. It's called laughing gas for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> The laughing gas has kicked in and the pain is numb, so the doc can get that kneecap back in place. So all we have to do really is gently straighten the knee whilst pushing the kneecap forwards into the middle of her knee. Because Alice has dislocated her kneecap so many times, she needs to come back to the hospital for a closer examination. Time for another look at the problem leg. Doing that today is surgeon Nick Barton Hansen. He's examining Alice while she's asleep under anaesthetic, so she won't feel a thing. Well, the two main tests, the first to see if her kneecap slides over to the side, which it did a bit more than the other side, and the other one to see where the ligament's torn is. That seems to be quite wobbly. Your body is tied together to keep everything in place. Ligaments tie bones to bones and tendons tie muscles to bones. If a ligament is damaged, it can make your body wobbly and unstable. So, what's the verdict? The reason she's been having so much trouble with that knee is because of the damage to her ligament. And that was caused by an old injury, and now her kneecap can move forward and back. So how can you help, Doc? What I'm going to do for her is to create a new ligament that can be done in one operation. Wow, amazing! 
We'll see how Alice gets on with that later in the show. Ouch. At Alderhey Hospital in Liverpool, 14-year-old Rachel is in accident and emergency and she simply can't shut her mouth. That's a bit rude. No, really, she can't shut her mouth. What's happened to Rachel? I think I've dislocated my jaw. Oh, I see. She's dislocated her jaw. I'm sure there's a perfectly ordinary explanation. I was biting the sofa. Biting a what? <laughs> For one minute, I thought she said she was biting the sofa. She did. I was biting the sofa. See? Okay. <laughs> she was just messing around. I, she was... Just a minute. How on earth did this happen? Well, Rachel was at home lying on her sofa, bored. There was nothing on the telly, nothing interesting to read, and nothing much to do. Or was there? Hang on, she's turned into a shark. That's because she circled the sofa like a shark circling its prey, on the hunt for something to amuse herself. Oh, right. Suddenly, she had an idea. Would her mouth fit around the edge of the sofa? There was only one way to find out. She opened her mouth wide and bit the sofa. But her jaw was completely stuck. Ouch. I found a lot different. Uh, like, it's harder to speak. Harder to what? Speak. Right. When I'm saying, like, S, S's, I can't say S's properly. Well, you do something silly once, and then you learn from it. I can't believe she's done it again. You mean she's done it before? It's only happened twice. <laughs> Seriously, Rachel, you've got to stop eating the furniture. Enter Dr. Shruk Messerhel. She'll be tackling Rachel's big mouth. Steady. Where's it hurting? You can just point, you don't need to talk. Hi. Both sides. And there. We're going to give you some medicine, which is a really strong painkiller. I think you've had it before. And then I'm going to put some gloves on and see if I can get it back into place. OK. All right? So what's going on inside Rachel's jaw? Well, inside your head are 20 bones that make up your skull. <laughs> Two of them are in your jaw. There's the mandible, which is one of the strongest bones in your body, and the maxilla. They're linked together by a hinge, which allows you to open and close your mouth. And Rachel's hinge has become unhinged. Before Dr. Shrute can get to work, she needs Rachel's muscles to be relaxed. So Sister Tammy gives her a strong painkiller up her nose. Well, she can't exactly swallow it, can she? What I'm going to try and do is actually hold on to her jaw and push it back in there so it goes back into place. We'd best leave that painkiller to get to work then. We'll be back later to see how Dr. Shrook gets to grips with Rachel's jaw. In the UK, there are hundreds of rapid response medical teams on standby. And they need to be on the scene of an emergency in minutes. We're going on call with the UK's emergency services, heading into the thick of the action to help save lives. Now it's Chris's turn on the front line. This is a rapid response vehicle, and it's designed to get a paramedic to the scene of an emergency within minutes. On call with me today is paramedic Ben White. And we've just had a new call come in. We've just been called to a lady's fallen over and she may have dislocated her shoulder. You've got a lot of blood vessels and nerves in the armpit. If the bone here at the top of the arm pops out of the socket, it can damage all those structures. So I've got my camera, so I'm going to take you as close as I can to the action. We arrive on the scene in just under three and a half minutes, and we find Maxine on her bathroom floor. So what happened this morning? I've been showered, just finished, turned off, stepped out of the shower, whoops on the floor. Is it a constant pain or only when you try and move it? Constant. Is it down here? It's just all my shoulder, really. All your shoulder. Ben's assessing her to see if he thinks it's bruised or broken or if she's dislocated the joint. So if this bone at the top of the arm has actually come away from the other bone in the shoulder, it's in the wrong position. If that's the case, they can take it to hospital and just pop it back in with some painkillers. What we'll do, get some pain relief out for you. Yeah. We'll see how we go on gas and air. Yeah. Might be that you need to pop a little needle in your hand, give you something yeah. a bit stronger. As well. Mm -hmm. There you go. If you just hold that, wow. just take deep breaths for us. Yeah. Take nice deep breaths on that. that might make Gas and air numbs the pain to make Maxine more comfortable while Ben checks her blood pressure. But she's still in a lot of pain, so Ben decides that Maxine needs to go to hospital for further checks. And in the meantime, he gives her some stronger painkillers through an injection. And what's really good about this is it's not just going to make life nicer for Max, 
It's also going to help the doctors in hospital because reducing the pain reduces all the spasm in the shoulder and that'll make it easier for them to treat Maxine. So we can get Maxine uh, down onto the ambulance where we can make her comfortable for a trip up to the hospital to get it, get it x-rayed and get it sorted. The medical team has arrived and the crew make sure Maxine moves as little as possible as she makes her way to the ambulance. So Max is on her way to hospital and Ben arriving really quickly and giving really good pain relief It'll make it much easier for the doctors to treat her. With our job done here, we get ready for the next call-out. There are rapid response teams like this all over the UK, which means that expert medical care can be with you within minutes of a serious emergency. So, that's amazing. Really? No. Let's head back to accident and emergency to see what's happening with our patient. 14-year-old Rachel is in hospital after coming in with a dislocated jaw. She was bored at home, you know how it is, nothing to do, so she opened her mouth wide and bit the sofa. The things you do when you're bored. But we have Dr Shrute Messerhel on the case. Having given Rachel some medication to relax her jaw muscles, it's time for her to get to work on that jammed jaw. Okay, just try not to bite onto me, sweetheart. I just gripped hold of her jawbone, put my thumbs right at the back and just pushed down and back really quite hard. I was actually kind of kneeling on the bed to kind of get my weight behind it. This might look extreme, but the lower jaw is one of the strongest bones in the body. Girl, you're doing grace. You okay? That's, um, and I oh. think we have success. Is it back? Yeah. Oh, you're a oh, well, that's That was right. quick. <laughs> As soon as I let go, she was able to move the jaw. She was able to kind of actually clench the whole of her bottom, bottom teeth together. My thumbs also hurt. <laughs> That's not right. Rachel's finally able to shut it. But just to be on the safe side, let's get her x-rayed quick and check everything's in place. So these will get sent down on the computer for the doctors to view. Now you can open and close your mouth, Rachel. What have you got to say for yourself? I knew what I'd done straight away. Well, you did have half a sofa in your mouth. She needs to stop biting things. <laughs> good idea. Anyway, the x-rays are back and they're looking good. Say cheese. But Dr Shrook will also want to examine Rachel's jaw again. Is the x-ray showing that it looks like it's back? The x-ray looks OK. Is that how she normally looks? <laughs> well, Mum will know if she looks right. Do you know? I think it is, yes. You think it is? <laughs> you think? She's only lived with you for 14 years. At least Rachel will know her own face. Is that what you normally look like? I don't know. You don't, <laughs> you don't know? Are there no mirrors in your home? Or maybe she's eaten them all. Well, with all this uncertainty, Dr Shrook opts for one last bit of treatment. You're going to love this, Rachel. We're going to have to put a bandage round your head. <laughs> OK. Told you. Yeah. I'm going to look really stupid. Yep, but at least it'll keep that jaw in place. Obviously, I want to go out like, tomorrow and stuff, <laughs> which isn't going to look good. I'd like to say it will look fine, but, well, it doesn't. Still, your mum will make sure no one gets to see you looking like a half-dressed Egyptian mummy. Hang on, what's she doing? Stop getting your phone out taking pictures. <laughs> that snap will be shown to the neighbours, I bet. Anyway, it's back home for poor Rachel. All oh, right, no. I've just got to go back home and face my dad and my sister now. <laughs> They're going to be laughing their heads off at me. Don't worry, no one's going to laugh, honest. I'm glad we got it all sorted out for her, even though she did have to leave with a <laughs> bandage around her head. <laughs> In Liverpool, Alice is back for an operation on her dodgy knee. Oh, yes, I remember. She was just chilling. Oh, no, you don't. We haven't got time. This is just a recap. It was break time at school, and Alice was sitting on a table, swinging her leg. Then she turned, and her kneecap popped out. Ouch! So what is this op going to do? Hopefully this will make my life better. <laughs> And with that, Alice heads off down to theatre for an operation to rebuild her knee ligament using one of her own tendons. Now remember, your body is tied together to keep everything in place. Ligaments tie bones to bones and tendons tie muscles to bones. But Alice's ligament is damaged, making her knee wobbly and unstable. Still smiling, Alice is soon off to sleep and ready for knee fixer extraordinaire, Mr Nick Barton Hansen. It's lights, camera, action, as Nick's using a special camera to fix Alice's knee. 
the first thing he does is pull out two of Alice's tendons. These long, stringy things attach muscles to bones. So that's going to be the new ligament when it's put in. Before that, he needs to stretch them. This makes them less elastic and a bit stronger. Now he needs to get Alice's knee ready for her new ligament. A shaver and vaporizer gets rid of the old damaged ligament and scar tissue. Next, a hole is drilled in the bone to hold the new ligament. Now the new ligament is prepped and ready to go into Alice's knee. That done, the whole thing's tightened up and locked in place with a plastic screw. That's more like it. It doesn't wobble around anymore or dislocate. Ain't Mr. Hanson the man? Alice gets stitched up. And we're finished. Operation went very well. She's got a, a lot of hard work to do herself now. I think she'll do very well with it and she should be fine. Our patient is soon awake, but it will take six weeks of physiotherapy to get her knee working again. Hopefully I can do sport now and football and I'll be yay! Great result! Bye, Bye Alice. Alice! Bye, Bye Bear! Bear.